Welcome again to this uh, session on Power BI and Power Automate, Better Together. So, Power Automate and Power BI, uh, Better Together. For the story, um, actually, I've been working for years with Serge Luca, as known as uh, Dr. Flow. <laughs> So, which is very dedicated to the flow and the power automate. So we started early to look at the possible interaction between Power BI and Power Automate. So this session will be about the different uh, possibility that you can have between the two products and what you can achieve uh, from your side to extend the toolbox of Power BI by using Power Automate. So a uh, quick introduction about me. So like uh, Michael mentioned it, uh, I think he was pretty exhaustive, <laughs> more than I am. So I've been working on the Microsoft uh, data platform for more than 20 years now. So there is uh, nothing to add to that. And I am also a user group leader for uh, the, the French speaking people in Paris and in, uh, and in Belgium. And we organize Saturday uh, as well. That's enough for me. And let's talk about the agenda. So what I will do, first of all, we will have a look to uh, what we can call Portomate 101, just to be sure that we place uh, the right uh, product at the right place with Power Automate, what it is, what is the architecture on the Power Platform, who it is organized. And then we will just go through the different points between Power Automate, so Power Automate and the Power BI dataset, what's possible, what are the actions that are available, then the possibility to use the Power BI data alert in relation with Power Automate. Then we will talk about, it's my favorite part, the Power BI REST API and Power Automate, or can we uh, use them together? We will have a, a quick, a quick talk about Power Query in Power Automate, and then about Power Automate and data flows. So let's move to the introduction. So for people who, has not, who are not aware uh, about it, of course, there is more than Power BI in the Power Platform. So you will have the Power BI for the business analytics part. Data people like us, we are really into that, but we are surrounded by other products. And this will build the Microsoft Power Platform, a low-code platform. So you will find the Power Apps. So that would be also a nice session because there is a lot of interaction possible between uh, Power BI and Power Apps as well. So that's more to build forms and application. Usually Power Apps and Power Automate, they are really working together because Power Automate is all about the process and the intelligence of what you want to do. So there is the Power Automate and it's all about the automation and the workflow. We will have a, a deeper look into that. And then we have the last but not least, as we say, maybe the least actually. So it's the Power Virtual Agent. And the Power Virtual Agent allows you to create chatbots. So it's the the new the new guy in the game if i may say they have some some stuff in common the data connector although the connector that you will find in power automate are not the same that you will use in power bi they can reach the same targets but they are not the same connector so you cannot use one uh, define one for power bi and reuse it for power automate but there is a lot of them uh, also, the AI uh, builder platform will be available to both and uh, the common data service. So no, we are more talking about uh, Dataverse, of course. So in Power Automate, the connectivity is huge, really huge. The integration as well. The moment the slide was done, it was about 400 different connectors to 
software as a service in the cloud, file provider, database, and so on and so on. You can use the data gateway. And in this case, it will be the same. I will, I will show you that later on. And if this is not enough, you can also create custom connector like you can do in Power BI. But again, the connectors are not the same. So there is different types of flow, which is interesting to know, of course. So you will have what we call schedule flow. I think there is, it's not rocket science to understand that uh, scheduled flow is about uh, <laughs> a schedule, a plant one. Then you will have automated flow. There will be an event that will trigger the flow. We will see one of them uh, during the session. There is the instant flow where you will be able to manually trigger your flow. You can do that with button and button can be physical one. So you can picture a button in a meeting room and you, you tap on it and a flow will uh, then trigger the coffee machine. It's a dream, of course, huh? and a nice guy will bring you the coffee. There are business process flow, which are more related to a process like in Dynamics. And then there is no also uh, the UI flows, meaning that you can make more robotic approach and with legacy program, you can record, you can record your action and then the flow will be able to transform that, this recording into different uh, action. And Power BI, I'm not sure I need to present it, of course, but uh, so the Power BI, it's because sometimes I give this session to introduce Power BI more to Power Automate people. So the Power BI is, of course, the service, but also the rich client that you can have on your, on your desktop which allows you to connect to several data source, do mashup of your data, present them in stunning visualization and share them in different ways in the cloud, thanks to the Power BI service. Okay, so the Power Platform architecture, South. Yes, I couldn't resist to put, you know, the tremendous diagram that uh, Melissa Coates is doing uh, regularly and updating regularly to show the whole ecosystem. So this one is the whole ecosystem around Power BI with the different topics like data source, authoring, sharing. And then you can find here in this little part of this diagram, the related service, Power Platform, Power Apps, Power Automate, and Dataverse, former CDS. And of course, today we will focus on that part. But if we want to think about the Power Platform in a more conceptual way, we can also think about it like, you know, the old layer that still makes sense, like the <clears throat> data access layer, where you will have flow reaching data source, different of them. Then you will have the business layer with the intelligence, and all the logic of your uh, solution. The presentation layer, which will usually use Power Apps Team Share Platform and then an analytics layer like Power BI. And you can also have a login layer by using some kind of stuff like Azure application inside. So this is a way to see it. But of course, today in this, in this slide, you see all Power BI can be beneficial for Power Automate in the, the whole architecture of a solution of an application. So for instance, if you are really into Power Automate, maybe uh, you have seen some, um, some announcement around the BPM toolkit. So the business process management toolkits built on top of Power Automate which is a, an application. And of course, all the layers there are used and the Power BI is the cherry on the cake uh, providing all the analysis. But today we will, we will go more into how Power Automate can be useful to uh, Power BI. Okay. So of course, there are a lot of interaction between all layers like here. So 
the first interaction that we have seen between and in that time it was still called Microsoft True. Now it's for Automate. The first interaction we have seen were interaction uh, with the data set in Power BI. So let's have a look at that. So when you are in Power Automate and you are doing some action with data source, so like I show you before in the, the slide with the connector, you can connect to a data source. And of course, you can connect to data source on premise by using a management data gateway, which is the same in this case. It is actually the same than the one you are using for Power BI. Sometimes you will see this. <clears throat> this is just to prevent you and to say, be careful, this, if you are using data on premise, you will need a premium license for Power Automate in this case. And you can be quite, because uh, premium in Power Automate is not that expensive as premium in Power BI, of course. So, data source. Then we can have uh, our Power BI ecosystem, like here, with different uh, reports and dashboards. And of course, all of those objects and artifacts, they are based on data set. And those data set can be refreshed and so in this case, we have a, a really uh, loose connection between Portomate. Portomate is writing, Power BI is reading the information from the same data source. And because they have some connector that can manage that, it's possible. So it's degree zero of interaction, if I may say. Then there is another way to interact between a data set and Power Automate. It is an action that allows you to directly write data into a data set. But in this case, you will need a very specific data set. You will need a streaming data set. So you will be able to build a flow in Power Automate that will write your data into the data set by reacting to some event. And then, of course, you will be able to have a dashboard that will be live. So it's a very specific scenario, of course, because the data set must be a streaming one. Another interesting action in this case is the fact that from Power Automate, there is a refresh data set action. So uh, it can be more comfortable to do that from there, uh, maybe uh, in reaction to some event. Uh, maybe just to, to schedule it in a certain way, but there is no magic there. So you will trigger the fact that you will refresh your data set like you can do in PowerShell, but with the interface of Power Automate and in a flow. So that means that you can run the action of the refresh data set. You can send an email, you can uh, uh, trigger another action, you can organize some some order to refresh your data set if you want. That's totally possible. But there is no magic because it will not allow you suddenly to do as many uh, refresh as you want. <laughs> so you will, you will still be limited by uh, the license, meaning that uh, in, uh, <clears throat> without having premium, you will be able to do it eight times a day. And otherwise, I think it's uh, 48 times a day. Uh, the refresh of your data set, but the action exists. For the on-premises data source, like I mentioned it before, you will use the same data gateway architecture that the one we are using in Power BI. So like you can see here, this is an architecture that is shared by different components into the, the data platform meaning uh, Power BI, of course, but also the data flows, also the Power Platform data flows. We will talk a little about that later. Uh, also for the Azure Analysis Service, Power Apps, Logic Apps, and so on and so on. It is one gateway for all of them. And of course, in Power BI, we are used to read data. In Power Automate, we can also write data if we want to. 
Okay, so maybe we can have a quick look to the interface of Power Automate. So I will go here. So when you are on your uh, tunnel, like I will go in uh, my Power BI here, you have the waffles and you can find Power Automate from there and the other way around, of course. So <clears throat> here, what we have, uh, if I go to the Power Automate and I have a look to the different flows that are existing here. Okay. Okay, here I have it. So for instance, this flow is a very simple one, a very basic one, it's just to show you the interface. So when you create a flow, the first thing is will be a trigger or to start your flow. And in this case, it is a button. So you will start the flow manually and then you will add an action. And when you add an action, you will choose and there is a lot of them. If you want to do an action on Power BI, it will propose you some stuff like here. So you can add rows to a data set in a streaming data set. You can refresh a data set. There is also uh, the action to export. I will, I will talk about that a little later on uh, the session. Okay. And of course, when you do that, you will give you will give more uh, information. So in this case, this is really really basic because you you will be connected to your uh, your tenant. And then, okay, this is my workspace. This is my data set. I will save it, and I am able to test it, or I can simply run it as well here. And it will refresh uh, my data set here, run flow, and then you will be able to access your run history, like here. So this was a test, this was succeed. And what it is really interesting for the troubleshooting is that you will be able to see all uh, the information of your run, if I may say. Okay, so this is a, a really simple uh, action in Power Automate. And of course, you are able to add as many actions as, as you want to enrich, enrich that. Okay. This is another. Um, another stuff of what I was explaining for the interaction between Power Automate and Power BI. Of course, Power BI, like we see, uh, like we saw in the Power Platform architecture, Power BI can be at service for flow. And for instance, if you are logging the action in your flow, then you can build off top of that some flow analysis. But this is really a decision that you want to do some analysis on the running of your flow, that's all. So it's not a built-in dashboard, this is something. So for instance, we have built some, uh, some uh, flow to approve expenses, and then we wanted to analyze the approval uh, of the expenses and to see how long it takes to approve an expense for transportation, uh, for instance, and so on and so on. Okay. So those are the very simple action that you can have uh, with Power Automate. Now, there is another one that you may have maybe uh, a, quick, a quick flash when I was uh, showing the screen, which is an action called export to file. And I call that part Power Automate and Power BI subscription. 
if you are like me, people from the old age of SQL, you were maybe used to use SSRS reports, so the reporting server of Microsoft. And there you had uh, the data-driven subscription. So the fact that you were able to manage with stable subscription and send a report to your user in a very uh, enterprise way. And so far in the interface of Power BI, it's not really there. You can use the REST API to do that if you want uh, programmatically. So there is no an action still in preview in Portomate that will allow you to <clears throat> export. So to connect to Power BI and then export to file some report. And when you do that, of course, after that, you can choose to send them as attachment into an email or to put them into a folder. So you will have the tool to build a data-driven subscription if you want. The only thing is that even though you are using uh, the, the REST API uh, in PowerShell or the Power Automate action, you will need Power BI Premium to do it. So I will show you how it works. Okay, so again, because I'm very lazy person and I didn't want to show you too complex flow, if you want to go really deep into the flow logic and the way to organize stuff and to have main flow and child flow and loop and very nice stuff, I uh, propose you to follow uh, the session of Dr. Flow <laughs> or other people into the data platform. So here I really scoped into the, the simple action that we can do. Of course, the moment you want to use those actions and implement them uh, into your project, you will need to do more than what it is here on the screen. So, I have choose the action export to file for Power BI report. There is the same action export to file for paginated report as well because we are in premium. And so both of them are available. When you do that, again, you will be able, because you will be connected to your Power BI tenant, you will be able to choose the workspace then to, use the, to, to choose the report, then to choose the format of your export. And there is also uh, some really interesting parameters that are available, like the, the, the regional settings that you want to apply. If there are some hidden page, technical page inside your report, you can choose to use them or not. You can even go uh, through the, the bookmark and then precise the filters, precise the page, the visual, and so on and so on. And what it is important to understand here, you can also uh, use identities to benefits of the role level security and the roles. What is really important here is that in Portomate, Actually, when you are in a box like here, you can use dynamic properties. And of course, the power is coming from there. So if I go then to my second action, like here, send an email. As you can see here, I was using dynamic content. So in this case, I was just using my own email here and then in my email I was asking to attach the file content and at each step of the flow it will propose you some dynamic content dynamic property and there are also function uh, to help you to manipulate and there is a language behind that uh, from logic app as well and that means, and I'm just opening a little, uh, you know, the, the cover of the box, but that means that actually sky is the limit in Power Automate because, of course, 
we can picture a scenario where we will connect to a table with all the names of the people uh, that needs to have the reports. Then we will use a loop uh, for each. We will go through the data from this table and then we will send the report with different parameter and action. So the, the previous box with the action itself will be able to retrieve all of those properties dynamically from a uh, data set if we want or from connection as well. So what I show you here is just the very basic level. Then I trust you to find a way to do it uh, on a very nice manner. The only thing is, I was very excited to test it, but it requires premium. And then I was very excited because at the time, the evaluation of premium per user was available. Unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, I was able to do it once and then it stopped working because of the capacity that are related to the Power BI premium per user. It's not enough to benefit from that. So you really need, uh, I can send you the link about it, but it, it's really uh, written into the documentation. You really need a true premium capacity to be able to use this, uh, this nice uh, possibility. And if you want to do the same export to file uh, with PowerShell, for instance, by using the REST API, it will be the same. So licensing is always waiting you at the corner. <laughs> there is no workaround for that, uh, that I know, actually. So they are very careful about uh, this kind of stuff. I will just have a look. Yes. So. Actually, it works for me, and I was able to send me this uh, unique, ugly email with my report in it. So if I open that, you will see that I received here my report in uh, PowerPoint. So it works, but it requires premium. Okay, the interaction with Power BI and Power Automate regarding data alerts. In this case, we will work in the other way around, meaning that we will use the data alert to trigger a flow. So that is, this is really simple, straightforward and interesting. I will go to a dashboard. So here I have a, an old ugly dashboard. <laughs> about hypothetic expenses that we are doing in a hypothetic company. And then I'm really concerned about, you know, uh, the, the trip to Las Vegas that my associate is doing and the level of expense and this kind of stuff. So to be careful, I will put a data alert here. I put a data alert, pom 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 to be sure that when the total amount of expense is above a threshold, there is an alert that will be sent to me. But if you pay attention in tiny character here, you have the use Microsoft for Automate to trigger additional action. And it will give you the possibility to create a flow from your alerts in Power BI. And because Power Automate is so rich, then sky is the limit again, because you will have all the different uh, kind of action accessible for you. And there are a lot, a lot of them. So you can post a message in a chat, you can, send, you can send an SMS if you want, you can uh, grab uh, the weather, why not, <laughs> or the phase of the moon. There is a lot of stuff that are possible from there. And you see, it's really user-friendly because you can find the different data alert that you have put into your tenant, take them, choose an action, and react 
to that event in a proper way, depending of your, on your business rules, of course. So it's a quick one, but a nice one. Okay, so as you may have seen, when I am in, in Power Automate and in Flow, and I want to add an action like here, and I mean, okay, what can I do with Power BI? It's quite poor. And you are like, really? Really, Microsoft? Is that? So I have four standard built-in action in preview for years, to be, to be honest. So this is a little disappointing, but on the other hand, maybe you are like me, a little lazy, and you want to do more with Power Automate to manage your Power BI. There is, of course, a solution. And the solution will be, how oh, can I combine the REST API possibility with Power Automate? So I don't know if there are uh, many of you using uh, the REST API of Power BI, but of course, the moment you want to do some extra step in management, you are like uh, drive into the REST API, of course. So the scenario will be the following here. I want Power Automate to interact with the Power BI REST API to do everything for me. And for that, I will need a custom connector. And then I will be able to do a lot of stuff because at the moment, and there, there are more, no, I think we are at more than 300 uh, methods that are available in the, the Power BI REST API. I'm not very good with number. So I just say a few, a lot, many of them. So in this case, there is a lot, many, many methods to interact with your Power BI tenant. But there is no specific connector, but I can easily create a custom connector. And I say easily because it is more friendly that, than create a custom connector in Power BI. I don't know if you have done that, but creating a custom connector in Power BI is really exhausting. In this case, and again, because I'm very, a very lazy person, I find some interesting uh, reference from Chris Reb and from uh, another guy called Miguel that helped me to do, to do it. But it is mainly uh, Chris Reb who was testing that. So what we will do actually, we will create the Power BI custom connector and normally you need to describe each of the method by hand, but of course no one wants to do that. So we will use the REST API Swagger file, which is a file that is uh, publicly available on GitHub. And this file describes all the methods that the Power BI REST API offers to you. And it will give us the possibility to create the uh, custom connector. So to do that, When you are in the uh, Power Automate interface, you do not need to go to connector. Oh, that's too logic. <laughs> you need to go to data and then you will find custom connectors. Yes, I want to leave this page. Okay. So, of course, it will be like in, you know, the cooking show on TV, I will show you how to uh, prepare the, the chicken, but the chicken is already cooked and put uh, in the oven. So <laughs> it will be uh, easy. When you want to create a new custom connector, of course, you are not going to choose create from blank. We are lazy of maybe efficient people. So we will import, in this case, an open API file. And at this moment, hop, this is the moment you will pick here the Swagger, uh, I think it's this one, Swagger Good. 
file, so it is a JSON file. Then you will click on continue and then you will need to follow different steps to create it. And if you click here on Swagger Editor, this is really interesting because it will give you a quick look at the way Automate is able to interpret the, the file and the description of the action into the different action. And if you are familiar with the Power BI REST API, I think that all the stuff that here rings a bell into your mind, because you see, you have the gateways, you have the import, the default workspaces report, and so on and so on. So there is a lot of action that you will retrieve Actually, you will retrieve hundreds of action by creating one connector. Of course, there is a few extra steps that needs to be done. Um, if I go back here, so first you will need to have this REST API Swagger file. You will retrieve the action. This slide is really out of date because at the moment it's really more than that. Of course, then you will be able to use it in uh, Power Automate as well. An extra important step is that you will need, of course, to authorize your connector uh, to interact with your tenant. And to do that, there will be, I will just edit this one, there will be the need to define here a security and to authorize it into the Azure Active Directory. So there are procedures for that, uh, but you will need to really give them a, a client ID and a secret and this kind of stuff here, okay? So is that working at least? Because I, I'm here talking about this custom connector with a nice icon with ice cream. It, it doesn't look that uh, <laughs> very uh, professional or very uh, serious or very usable. So let's go to my flow. Actually, this is not a good one. Pom, pom, pom. Maybe here, manage your flow today. Let's take this one. I like this one. Create a workspace. So in this flow, actually, and again, it is a very simple here just for the demo, but in a real business scenario, what is the utility of that is that you can picture create with power apps a form and then people need to answer a lot of questions and then you will create the workspace for them uh, with the Power Automate and with the flow. You will be able to do that and you will be able to be sure that the naming convention is okay, that et cetera, et cetera. So a kind of self-service creation into your uh, Power BI tenant, but with all the business rules that you want to put there. So this one is just to create a uh, new workspace and actually uh, just to show you that my custom connector is here this is the power bi rest api when i go here look at that i have all my action here available so it takes you like 15 minutes to create this custom connector once you have the swagger file once you have uh, the possibility to register the application into the Azure Active Directory, and then you are ready to go and to create this kind of flow. So maybe we can just run it here. This flow will create a workspace, run. And I will give a name to this workspace. I don't know what, <laughs> what why I put, <laughs> Covidinia there, but okay. Um, maybe I can call this hybrid. And I will run the flow. 
I can go to the run history here to see if it was succeed. Oh, it is. Okay, so I will go back to my Power BI tenant. I will maybe do some refresh because it takes a little time to create the workspace. Bum, bum, bum. I go to my workspace here and then I will try to find the hybrid. And here is it. So it worked. Up. My new tenant is there. Uh, my new workspace is there. So, and of course, I just show you a one step flow, very dump, but the idea is more okay, I will create. Uh, the workspace, then I can give access to people. I, I can put some template on it. You, you think about it, you have your real use case scenario that you can apply there and you will be a very happy uh, Power BI administrator. So this is my favorite use of Power Automate, to be honest. It is the fact that I can easily interact uh, with uh, Power BI. Of course, sometimes I will prefer to use PowerShell and be on a black screen and coding the whole day. <laughs> but actually, I really like to use Power Automate. Okay, let's go back to the slide. The Power BI custom connector. So you are not anymore limited to the four pool uh, action that Microsoft has, uh, has put into Power Automate. You can reuse thanks to this description file you are able to create this custom connector and to reuse all the method that you want demo is done so for automate and for query i will go quick to that uh, actually there is an action called power query in power automate that allows you to use a power query interface to interact with it's still in preview for i think it's something like three years or four years, I don't know. I don't remember. It's like there forever, still in preview. And the only thing that you can use is a connection to an Azure SQL database. This is really limited and they are not investing anymore into that. So I can quickly show you, I have a flow with that, but I'm not even sure it is worthy. Uh, up. Uh, it's more responsive, no, pop, 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 pop. it's on my other environment. So you can have different environment uh, on Power Automate, which is really interesting to work with, uh, you know, dev, uh, test, uh, and so on. And I will just show you the look of it. But I think it will die. I really think that. So transform data using for a query, and then you will be able to re reuse the, the data sets that you obtain into Power Automate and to do some manipulation, but you cannot use parameters. You cannot go very, very uh, deep into the, the stuff. So it's for me, it is like a dead end. That's why I show you that just to say, don't use, don't use it. There is no future for that. And you see, even the interface is not loading <laughs> properly. It was a few minutes before the presentation, of course, but okay. Okay, let's, uh, let's leave that actually. And if it's come, I will show you the interface, but it's just a power query interface. And why there is no feature to that? Uh, because of data flow. So, Data flow that you may know from the Power BI environment exists also in the Power Platform. So you can create you can create data flow in different environment. So with data flow, of course, it is a, like an online version of our query, which allows you to com copy, combine, transform, refresh your data and then to put them into what was called dataverse. So 
this is accessible from Power BI, from Power App, from Power Automate, from the whole Power Platform itself. Uh, but you can also walk, and that's the case when you are using analytics data with data flow into a data lake, your own data lake or a data lake by default that, are, that is provided by, uh, by Microsoft. Okay, so there is only the, the leak for the analytics part. For the moment, it's still a little confusing, the Dataverse version, because when you are in Power BI desktop, for instance, and you want to connect to Dataflow, you can do that, and you will see both. You will see uh, the Dataflow for the board platform, the Dataflow for Power BI, but actually they are uh, on quite the, the, same, the same page. Okay, so it's time to go to the conclusion of it because what I have done today is more to show you a list of different possibility between Power BI and Power Automate. So to summarize that, Power Automate, of course, can interact with data source. Those data source can be used by Power BI, which is degree zero. Then uh, Power Automate is able to directly write into streaming data sets. That's a scenario. On the other way around, Power BI is able to trigger a Power Automate and a flow. You can do some Power Query on SQL Azure, but like I mentioned it, I do not see any future on that. It's really, really narrow a scenario and there is I think the, the developer at Microsoft has left actually. So uh, I don't know if Serge Lucas is in the atten attendees, but he can maybe confirm that uh, for me. You can refresh the data set and so driven your refresh from Power Automate if you need more complex scenario that's only uh, the schedule one that you have in the Power BI uh, environment. Yes, this one, actually, I think I, I had deleted that. We, we will talk about that, but <laughs> I really need to delete that from the slide. It's, it's not there anymore. It's, it doesn't exist. It's just a, a fantasy. <laughs> it's just a fantasy. And we have also the, the data flow in the, the story uh, for the interaction. For me, uh, maybe you, you had the sense of it when I was presenting the most powerful, the most interesting action that we can have in Power Automate with Power BI is by using the custom connector to the REST API of Power BI, because that means that you will have access at the, the whole tool set, toolbox, and also access to all the power of Power Automate. Because what I have shown you uh, this evening is only really short flow with one trigger, a button, and then one action. But actually, of course, a flow is more complex than that. I've shown you a little that you can uh, reach dynamic properties. And of course, uh, the goal, the objective when you are uh, creating flow in Power Automate is uh, to be data driven, to grab the information from one source to, to, to make some processing of it, and then to take some action and to be able to create those nice process. And as a Power BI uh, administrator, I'm really uh, into the fact to use it to monitor my tenant, but also to do the management of it. I'm a lazy person and for automate is really nice for lazy person uh, like me. So thank you uh, for attending this. I have a, a last question for you. So if you are kind enough to take your phone and what I am asking here is what are you impatient to test? Pardon my Franklish, maybe it's not the proper way to do it, but actually uh, you can put any words or vote for other proposal if you want on your phone and tell me what do you want to test in the interaction with Power BI and Power Automate? What is the, the most exciting part for you? Mm -hmm. 
So each time someone is uh, typing a word, it will come and you are able to put a like on a proposal if you like it so we can have some, some weight on it. Don't be shy. I see that we are 23 people in the in the meeting and only five of you uh, put an answer. So <laughs> I know it's the evening. We are all tired. But I really hope that uh, this session gives you uh, more insight into the, the Power Automate and the possibility that you have between Power BI and Power Automate. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, I don't know if there are any questions here. Hi there, Isabel. Yes, uh, thank you very much for that. There are some questions that we've got to ask you, so you're not going to escape just yet. First question, are the built-in connectors in Power Automate common across the whole of the Power Platform? The connector in Power Automate? Uh, yes, you can actually, uh, you cannot use them uh, from Power BI, but you can use them from Power Apps. Can we connect the Power BI and Power Automate uh, with the Power BI desktop, or is it only for the online version? Connect Power BI and Power Automate. Uh, I, I'm not sure I understand the, the if, question. If you, can, you, if you can use the standalone Power BI desktop application to trigger or get information from Power mm -hmm. Automate. What you can do, actually, uh, if you are using the Power BI desktop, uh, you are able to connect to uh, some data flow on, on the Power Platform and to grab information from that. So information that are created from data flows in Power Automate or data flow in Power Apps, that's possible. You cannot, uh, for instance, trigger uh, a flow from the Power BI desktop because for the moment, the way to do that is to use a data alert. The data alert is only available in the dashboard and the dashboard are only available in the Power BI service. There is also now a rich client to create your flow. It's, it's quite recent, uh, but it's not an interaction, of course. Uh, it's just another tool. Um, Perfect. Thanks. Right, I'm going to jump straight to a question by Aaron, because it looks like he's, at, he's so keen that he's asked the question twice. Uh, which certification would you recommend to do? PL... 100 Power Platform App Maker or PL200 Power Platform Functional Consultant. He's a bit of a clever clogs because he's already done the PL900 fundamentals. Uh, actually, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's just lie then. Let, let's tell him to yeah. do PL100. I would always go for both. Yeah. 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 More is more. <laughs> exactly. Ne never stop learning. All right, I'm going to go on to uh, another question about the on-premises data gateway. Does it have any capacity bottlenecks um, if you are using it to connect to lots of on-premises services? And is there any way to increase throughput? Actually, um, this is something that you can find, you find the slide, or if you are lucky enough to assist a session uh, from search. Um, depending on the connector you are using, um, even for cloud uh, or SaaS uh, uh, sources, you may be throttled by the source and you, you may have some, some kind of bottleneck with that. And each of the connector will have some specific uh, property 
uh, that you will need to to fine tune actually. Okay, thank you. Uh, on the same note here, uh, if you try to work around uh, the performance refresh uh, limits and use a streaming data set, does that have unlimited refresh rates so you can see pretty much live data from the, from the data source? So the, yeah, the, the objective of streaming data set is, uh, is to see real time data. So you can connect them to a system like, you know, um, sensor in uh, factories and this kind of stuff. So I guess, but uh, to use it as a walk around for the refresh, <laughs> hmm. I, I, I never done that scenario because usually I'm in real, uh, you know, reporting and, and analytics environment. So we are not doing operational monitoring or real time. I've done that once uh, with, uh, but it, it was not even a streaming data set in this case. It was just a direct query on, on some uh, factory stuff. So, no. Uh, yeah. Okay, thanks. Got a comment from Serge here saying that um, the throughput is 100 calls every 60 seconds. Uh, he knows uh, his number. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, uh, I see a, ke a question about SSIS there, but maybe you are doing the question in uh, order. Yeah, we're going. Yep. So, Mikhail, yeah. do you want to jump to the next? Uh, yes. Uh, can you use flows as design templates for new flows so you can reuse most of the logic and redirect targets, sources, or uh, data components? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's possible to... Hmm. Yeah, it's possible to do some ILM with flow, uh, but it's not that easy. Actually, um, the, the remapping of, of the stuff is, is quite... Uh, so if you want to, to create a flow and move this flow to another environment or another tenant, um, Serge has just made the tools for that, actually. Um, but it's not straightforward, it's not built in, if I'm not wrong. Can you confirm that, Mr. Luca, if you're still here? <laughs> Otherwise, I can send some links after the session. But, okay. Whilst we're waiting for him to respond there, let's jump to another question. Can you attach your Power Automate designer to a Git repository? in the same way you can do data factory? Never done that, okay. actually. But they are Git action. Yeah, thank you, Serge. <laughs> I will need to send him some chocolate, I think. <laughs> as long as it's Belgium chocolate. Of course, we, we, we do not know any other chocolate here in Brussels. <laughs> no, there's a country, isn't there, close by that pretends they do chocolate called Switzerland, but it's not, it's not really. No. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, okay, next question. Is it rec recommended to use the common data service stroke Dataverse to share data across the power platform, or would we still use connectors to other data services? I think it's the future. It may be the future, but of course, again, uh, it will it will depend of the data culture in your company more than on the technology. <laughs> usually, enfin, it's what I, I see in my project. But uh, I think that in the, the coming months, uh, it will be it will be a huge part that we will need to to have a look at in our architecture. But it's because in, in BI world, the people that already have their, their, their big data warehouse, their big uh, data farm, and it's sometimes difficult to, to lead them to this kind of solution. Cool. Uh, we had a question from Nico. Uh, what is costing like and what licenses are needed? That's a huge question, right? That's a huge question. <laughs> um, yes, before that, I see a, a remark from Serge that uh, 
uh, the storage is expensive in Dataverse, but it is because it's uh, data as a service actually. Yeah? So you don't have the, the cost anymore of a DBA, <laughs> sadly, but okay. So regarding the cost of the, I, I will try, I have a table here, but I'm not sure it's up to date uh, regarding the cost. So I can try to show you that. Uh, it's not here. Uh, po -po 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 -pum. Automate licensing. So this is the information I have here regarding. Uh, but for instance, I know that uh, at the moment they are doing training regarding the Power Platform licensing at Microsoft. We have received invitation for that uh, because they are they are changing uh, very often <laughs> the, the licensing model. So it, it really uh, depends. So. so we got a question from Lazarus. Uh, if there is any good resource out there to go more deeply into the Power Automate expression language, so the, the Power Automate expression language is coming from uh, Azure Logic App. Uh, actually, it's this language. Uh, I will add some link. I will ask uh, Dr. Flo to give me the, the right links to that, and I will add that to the presentation. Uh, we move on to Mr. Andrew Wong, who asks, uh, when creating an automated task reading from stroke pushing to Power BI, can you use service principles or do you have to tie the flow to a specific user principle? I hate these security questions. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I get Google. Yeah. <laughs> Um, can you can you repeat the, the question? Yeah, sure. So I'm yeah, sure. So when creating an automated task reading from or to pushing to Power BI, mm -hmm. can you service principles to do that? Or do you have to tie the flow to a specific user principle? That's a good question, actually. Um, in Power Automate, when you are using a connector, usually uh, it's the caller that is uh, the identity to, to, do the, to do the action, but a way to act uh, on, on behalf of is to use child flow. It's a technique that search uh, teach me actually. Uh, and so you are able in the property of the child flow to uh, edit the connection property and to say, uh, which identity uh, you want to use to do to, to to use this connector, this connection. So in that way, you will be able. And I guess that for the Power BI REST API is the fact that you need to connect as an admin, or and maybe you are not admin. You have a, you you have a specific account for that. So it's possible, but it requires some uh, some trick in Power Automate. Cool. Can you take data from somewhere and, from a, yeah. and make it to go into a SQL Server table with Power Automate? Yes. Uh, you, you, you can do that, but uh, I'm not sure it will be efficient. It's not an ETL. It's not that, for that. that. Is, yes, uh, I, I guess that's why we have the next question about the SSIS mm -hmm. as well, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would you want to ask that question, Mikael, about SSIS? Because I don't see it. <laughs> uh, da, 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 yes. so for, for me, Power Automate is not to manipulate a large data set. Uh, it's not to transform uh, stuff. To do, to do so, you, you have data flows, you have uh, the data factory, uh, uh, still SSIS package, you will be more proficient to do that. Uh, so, because it's more a flow, like you can picture it, it's more like, it's not data set oriented, it's like, it's more like uh, code and 
you, you will have some effect like the Ribera, uh, the row by agonizing row. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so the question was, when would you use the SSIS versus data factory versus power automate versus power BI power query? And that was obvious power automate and the power query is for more of a flow information, whereas the SSIS and the data factory goes into the batch mm -hmm. processing category. Absol absolutely. So yep. uh, I, I would, if you want to do some ETL action, you will rely on data flow into the power platform and you will uh, trigger them from Power Automate, but you will not use uh, the logic and the, the work into Power Automate. Like I mentioned before, I do not see any life anymore into the action power query. Uh, with the Azure SQL database into Power Automate, you can still use it, but I'm not sure they will. They will uh, maybe Serge can confirm if the guy is has left Microsoft and not the developer that was into this section. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I've just got one question which I think needs to be answered. Um, so Belgium Fritz, um, what what would you put on them? Will it be? Um, Ketchup and mustard, or mayonnaise? What's the correct answer? <laughs> I will answer. It depends. <laughs> so it's true that in Belgium, when you go to uh, um, you, you call that chips, I, I think in the UK, huh? uh, That's the, correct, yeah, the, yeah, the the <clears throat> badly named French fries. That's heretic. It's from Belgium, of course. <laughs> And uh, the proper one has, are even cooked in ox uh, fat, uh, which is uh, particular for, for, the, for the taste. And usually it's mayonnaise, but I do not like mayonnaise. Maybe I'm not a true, <laughs> truly Belgian, <laughs> but I do like chocolate, but I, I do not like uh, mayonnaise. And there is a lot, a lot of option. So Belgian people, they are not doing regular mayonnaise. They are doing uh, samurai, uh, rich sauce, tartare. There is a lot of declination around the mayonnaise with a lot of flavor. So the I hope that very soon you will be we will be able to travel again and that you will come to Brussels to yeah. to taste them. Huh? Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. All right, thank you very much for that. Mikhail, would you want to do the wrap up and then to do the all stop in the recording and everything for me? Uh, yes, I will. Uh, I will thank everybody for attending our first standalone session here and end up with hello and goodbye from Sweden. Hello and goodbye from the UK. And thank you very much, Isabel. We really appreciate you joining us and to you, Serge, as well. Thank you. Thank you for having me.